Washing the hair and the body is best done before rigor sets in. But if, it, if rigor does set in, then you're going to need to wait for 24 to 36 hours until it starts to release to do the washing. It's useful to have a tarp on the floor under the table or around the bed, whatever you're doing the washing on. You can use a heavy plastic tablecloth or a shower curtain instead, anything that you have that will uh, keep the floor from getting too wet. Use a long table if possible, otherwise a gurney, a massage table, or a hospital bed. You can do all of this in a normal bed, but it is a much more difficult process. Use a plastic sheet under the regular sheet just to make sure your table doesn't get wet. And have all your supplies at hand somewhere on a counter. You can use dry shampoo if uh, your loved one has had their hair washed recently. Start off by putting uh, a rolled towel underneath the back of their neck. And although you can't see it, there's actually a pail right underneath our brother's head here. If you use plastic gloves when your loved one was alive, you can use them again, but remember dead bodies are less infectious than live ones, so only use the same precautions that you did when your loved one was alive. So to wash the hair, once the small towel is placed under the neck, then you take a large plastic bag and you cut a small hole in one of the closed end corners. Open up the open end and tuck part of it under the head and on top of the towel and sort of up underneath the shoulders. And then one person will hold the open end of the bag open with the head hanging down a little bit in it. And the whole purpose of this is that the plastic bug, a bag will then act as a funnel. This is a trick that Jerry Grace Lyon taught us. So then use uh, a watering can or a small pot and begin wetting the hair. And you'll probably have to move the face a little bit to the side or the head a little bit to the side on one side and then on the other side to get right back at the nape of the neck. Use a minimal amount of shampoo, just enough to get the hair clean. And you want to make sure the scalp gets a little bit of a rub too, not too hard, but enough that it, it's, it's clean as well. And then rinse the hair thoroughly. And a small face cloth over the eyes. We'll just make sure that there's no water that gets into the eyes. This plastic bag trick works really well. <laughs> Do you need some more? And then dry the hair out gently and take the plastic bag off. And then comb the hair out. Gosh, you can cut this 
Yeah. The brush is right there. <laughs> Definitely, if you have a hair dryer, you could use one. When you're washing the face and the neck, you might want to put a, a small washcloth over the eyes um, and wash them later on, but have a chance to really clean the face first. Making sure that you get all the folds in the neck and around behind the back of the ears and inside the ears. And all those little creases. And then towards the end, you should remove the face cloth and gently wipe the eyes. That's often where, you know, as people are in a coma, there's um, liquid from the eye that dries out. So you want to make sure that you've cleaned all that off. And then, of course, gently towel dry, or rinse, rinse first, and then towel dry. And at this point, you're also going to want to clean and rebandage any sores that are on the body. Um, usually, that would be wearing gloves, but at this point, since the body isn't being moved. Or, uh, around anymore, it would be time to to clean and rebandage the source. Next, you're going to need to clean the mouth. Use gloves if your loved one has had an active infection in the body, um, since you don't want to pick up the infection. If they're wearing dentures, try and get them out of their mouth uh, very early on before rigor happens. Clean them as regularly, including a douse of mouthwash, and then return the dentures to the mouth, as your loved one will look more natural with your, the teeth in. If they have their own teeth, then you would clean them the way uh, you regularly would, using a small amount of toothpaste on a toothbrush. When that's finished, then you can just swab the inside of the mouth with a little bit of vinegar, mouthwash, or a solution of tea tree oil. And that will just keep all of the smells from the mouth from developing, and especially if there are visitors who want to give your loved one a kiss on the mouth, it'll be a little fresher. Peace, release A lifetime of feelings Peace, release 
while my sore torn heart is healing, crossing my own thresholds as you journey beyond. Peace, release, ever in the mother's arm, ever in the mother's arm. Really?